Father Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Let's talk about American saints. The first American saint, St. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton. She was canonized in 1975. That's over 40 years ago. There's a long list yeah. of others who have been canonized since, but we're just starting to follow the causes of six African-American saints. Yes. Is that timing providential as our country continues to struggle to overcome racial discrimination? Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a gift to our church right now in the present moment uh, because we're all called to be saints. Like God, our Father, created you and he created me for no other reason than because he desires for us to be saints. And saints transform civilizations. We look at the saints all over the world, and it's the saints who were inspired by the Holy Spirit to be the agents of change and transformation in their land, their time. And I think now is the perfect time for us to begin to cultivate a sincere relationship with the six African Americans who are on the path to becoming saints um, from the United States of America, because they can witness to us how we can love each other better and how we can work with each other to transform our, our civilization into that of a civilization of love. Can you tell us about this momentum behind the movement to lift up the lives of these Catholics? Yeah, well, you know, I'll be honest with you. So as an African-American, uh, growing up, I, I never saw any saints who looked like me or who had stories that were similar to mine. And, and so it's been such a gift to have their images and their artwork and now even their statues uh, being present in some of our churches and in our schools, in the stained glass windows, in the, in the artwork. Because whenever we see ourselves represented as disciples of Jesus Christ who have the capacity to live lives that are canonizable, that's transformative. That is so transformative. And so, uh, and also, it, it helps other people to recognize, wow, like, like you, you can be holy too. I think growing up, all I ever saw were the images of the white saints, uh, who I love. I love John Paul II. I love Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I, I, I love them all. Uh, but the church is way bigger than Europe. You know, the church has saints in Asia, in Africa, in South America, North America, in, all over. And so it's it's a gift for us to, to be able to present their, their images and their lives and their stories. So, and these six African-Americans, who some of them are servants of God and others are venerable already, so they're very close to being beatified, um, they are a great witness to us that there's another way. There's another way that we can respond to the evil of our time that can bring about a transformation not only in hearts and in minds, but also in practices and policies in the way that justice is happening in our land. So then do you see that these saints and this vision could potentially impact vocations, especially in the black community? Yes, yes, because so often, again, when I first felt called to be a priest, I went to a Steubenville conference. I had a profound encounter with Jesus Christ and the Blessed Sacrament, who at that time I did not believe in. So it was a radical conversion I experienced before Eucharistic adoration. Uh, but in that time of adoration, I perceived the Lord invite me to be a priest. And I remember one of my first thoughts was, that can't be the voice of God, because I never saw an African-American priest. I never saw a black priest, period, right? Uh, and, and I never saw an African-American saint. I never knew of the story of Father Augustus Tolton. Mm -hmm. So if I would have known of his story, then that would have certainly been able to inspire me to say, okay, that might have been the voice of God that was calling me. I remember when I was first ordained, uh, they put my picture in a lot of bulletins throughout my diocese. Yes. And a mother reached out to me and she said to me, my son said, mom, we can be priests too. I didn't know black people could be priests because if we don't see ourselves represented in the clergy, then we might not believe that this could be for me too. So you're right. Representation is so, so important. And so when we see the representation of the entire body of Christ, it reminds us that we all need each other. We are all dependent upon each other. I don't know who's going to be uh, beatified first. It'd probably be uh, Father Augustus told you, Mother Amen de Lowe, because they're already venerable. But any one of them who uh, will be beatified first and they canonized will be a great gift to the entire body of Christ, not just African-Americans, but white people, black people, brown people, men, women, young, old, religious, lay, uh, because of their witness to what it means to live the life of an authentic Christian. Father Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. We talked to Father Josh Johnson last week about what it was like to be a black leader in the faith. You can watch his interview on our social media channels, including Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Next week, Pope Francis is set to canonize a total of 10 new saints into the church, including a Dutch priest and two religious sisters. Our EWTN Rome Bureau Chief Andreas Tonhauser joins us with that story.